something about this camera angle, or I don't know what doesn't look right, but I'm just gonna roll with it and try not to let it distract me. Um, yeah, I'm here in the studio on a Saturday. It's a nice day in Sydney. So yeah, all the normal people are at the beach or, you know, out and about, not, not in this little studio. Um, but yeah, so I was just having some thoughts. I'm super distracted today. I've <laughs> spent way too long. I spent like three hours on one drawing thing in my notebook and I haven't really done anything else. Um, so we'll, we'll make a video and, you know, see what, what happens after that. But, um, no, I had some thoughts earlier today, um, to do with YouTubing because I think like trying to come up with some kind of daily upload or daily content, whatever. Um, I think it's helping me like figure out what I enjoyed about YouTube in the first place. I don't really know that I can pinpoint exactly what it is because like I've been doing YouTube things, you know, couple videos every month or, you know, give or take a bit um, for a while, but I wasn't really picking up the habit of it in the same way. But now that I'm doing something every day, um, somehow it's making me enjoy it more. <laughs> and I, yeah, it's a weird feeling. I'm trying to figure out what it is. Um, maybe it's a like problem solving, like it's a task, like it's a quest. You know, I've mentioned in the past how, um, you know, some things about YouTube feel like doing a quest in a video game but like yeah maybe it's just having some small goal every day um you know we've tried to talk about goal setting in therapy and i'm always like i uh, don't really see what kind of goal could possibly help but um yeah trying to have something on youtube every day actually that kind of does count as a goal right and it's a small goal and it's an achievable goal and maybe somehow that's helping me psychologically um yeah, just to actually have a goal that feels worth doing somehow. I don't know why it feels worth doing. Um, there's just something about making YouTube videos that I think I actually like and I think I actually enjoy. And for me to say that I enjoy something is kind of a big deal because I spent so much of my life just feeling flat. And especially since my last really big depression, it's been really hard to enjoy anything. So, yeah, um, something about this really does seem to be helping at the moment um and so like it's kind of sad that i stopped youtubing for a while um but in another way like you know so the reason i originally stopped youtubing um i think was to be honest my ex um the first guy i dated because he you know he was one of these oh there's so much i could say but basically the relevant point is he would be like oh i'm not a jealous guy but then get annoyed that um people were giving me attention who you know like i think especially male attention um he felt threatened by but couldn't admit it um and he knew i was a youtuber before we started dating so that's really not my fault um but yeah no he made me feel bad about it and um there was a lot of stuff that he did and you know in terms of isolating me um socially as well when i was already socially isolated and um just yeah a lot of manipulative behaviors anyway at some point um it just got a lot more difficult to youtube especially when i moved in with him um that got a lot harder because i didn't have my own space in the same way and um uh, it, it's a long time ago so i can't remember all the logic and then there was just a point where i deleted a whole lot of videos I think maybe I also let myself get into that, like, you know, when I used to throw out my paper diaries, I think I had a little bit of that because, like, looking at some of my videos um, and, you know, like, these days I don't really watch my past videos, but I think maybe back then I might have and then just had one of those moments where I'm like, wow, past me, what even? And so, yeah, that, that could have happened. <laughs> so um, I guess it's just lucky that other people have already seen them, so, like, they're not... They can't be fully erased from the world, but, um, yeah, kind of sad. Anyway, anyway, so basically, um, I think my ex was a big reason for why I sort of stopped YouTubing for a while and deleted a lot of stuff. Um, yeah. And so now that I'm doing the daily vlog thing again, because that's what I used to do. I used to do daily vlogs, sometimes twice daily is just like whatever I wanted to upload. Whenever I wanted to upload, I had a lot of time to do it too. Um... And sort of getting back into that habit, like how I was before he came along as well, I, in some way I feel like it's kind of healing as well, because that was not a good relationship. I don't make it, like, of course there were some good bits, but the crap outweighed it and there was so much, like, yeah, it, 
it was not a good relationship. It was a toxic relationship, you know. All relationships, like you don't go into a relationship, um, you know, with everything being toxic. There's always got to be some kind of good thing that makes you go there and makes you stay. But um, yeah, <laughs> if they, even if they start okay, you can find out later that especially once you move in and they have their happily ever after, they feel like they can stop trying and all this kind of shit. And the... the um, Oh, double standards and there was a lot of stuff going on anyway um, no he stopped me doing something that I really liked and now I'm doing something I really like again and you know um that whole experience with that relationship I got over most of it a long time ago but I feel like now getting back to this the hobby that I was doing before it yeah I was just like when I was walking my dog this morning we went on a long walk again um, I was thinking about that going, yeah, I think this is kind of healing. Like maybe this is the last stage of healing from that relationship. Um, so that's kind of a, a cool thing as well. Um, but I think the main thing about daily vlogging is just that, yeah, it's making me enjoy YouTube again. And I really can't figure out why that is. Um, anyway, so that's, that's the main thing I wanted to make a video about today. Um, but yeah, I've had this headache and it's on the left side of my head, which is a bit unusual, like um, after bonsai and other days that I'm not doing so well, usually it's on the right side of my head that I have a headache, but today it's on the left and so I'm just like, it's kind of thrown me off and um, yeah, weird. And yeah, I spent three hours working on this one drawing in my notebook. I try and do a notebook entry um, every time I'm in the studio um, and then I'll go off and do painting or, you know, playing with bits of wool and stuff. Uh, uh, but yeah, I just did the three hours of that and I've had a cup of tea and I just, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do now. I've still got a few hours that I can stuff around in the studio, but yeah, while I was coloring in things in that sketch and um, also while I was just having a cup of tea and having my, I've got these like little mini chalk tip bickies um, in my locker. Uh, I was actually watching a lot of DID content because um so yesterday I looked up the list of therapists that my, the list of specialists that my um, psychologist recommended me to see. And, you know, two of them, the top two, I think, uh, yeah, they mentioned stuff about dissociation, but their ideal therapies are ones that are not actually scientifically backed or don't have enough evidence behind them. And that always makes me nervous because I am a very, I tend to be a very science minded person and so if there's not good evidence for the therapies I'm like uh. and then you remember like last year I saw that hypnosis lady she was terrible and I couldn't respect her um, especially once she made that comment about not understanding why psychology uses statistics like I just couldn't respect her and I can't be in therapy with someone whose intelligence I don't respect um, so yeah the first couple of therapists in that list because they listed those unproven therapies I don't want to see them but there was one and she has done like extra training and trauma type stuff I'm not entirely convinced still that my dissociative issues are really trauma based but hey um is she in amongst like actually looked up the specific training she did and there is a component on dissociative identity issues um so at least I know she's done some of that and then all her stuff was um you know scientific therapies she didn't have any of the weird wacky ones in there and um uh yeah I don't know it just it sounded better and I'm sort of like losing my train of thought a bit <laughs> this damn headache I'm trying to like massage it um but it's not anyway um also she's a clinical psychologist so in Australia you know when you have um government funded psychology sessions um, a registered psychologist, you do get some money back, but not as much as with a clinical psychologist. And because clinical psychologists have a higher level of training and a higher level of experience and all that kind of stuff and different, like, you know, a higher level, just, you know, what do they call it? Like, you know, where they certify them, I guess. Um, so yeah, whereas some of the others were not registered, like we're not clinical psychologists that was a registered psychologist. So there is one lady I'm thinking of sending an email um, depending on which location, I haven't looked at her, but I looked at the place she works and they said there's a three month, um, waiting list in one place, a one month waiting list in another place. Her list might be bigger. I don't know, but 
maybe I'll get in touch. And so I think that's why I was thinking about the DID thing and, you know, because I, I just looked it up yesterday. Uh, <laughs> I didn't, didn't get around to sending the email. I'm still iffy about it. But yeah, while I've been a bit distracted here in the studio, I just chucked on some YouTube videos, um, particularly uh, first-hand accounts, like people claiming to have DID and their experiences. Um, and, you know, a lot of it's the standard kind of thing, but then there's this one chick I came across and some of the things she's saying, I'm like, that actually is more relatable because a lot of the stuff that DID people say, um, there are bits and pieces that I can't relate to. And there's one interview with a chick who's saying, oh yeah, I really want to be a mother, blah, blah. I guess being schizoid, I can't relate to that. Like um, the DID people who have a lot of normal people interests, maybe that's why I can't relate to them. Um, and you know, like with their alters being like all these normal pe normal sounding people, I'm just like, I can't, I can't relate, you know, <laughs> you have your alter named Gary or, you know, Chloe or whatever the hell. I, that's not my experience. And like, yeah, it's just, it feels weird um in the way that I think like I can't find those relatable but then I find this chick who um yeah she was just saying some stuff I mean I don't know she didn't mention in this particular video having memory issues so I don't know if like she was trying to say that she actually has DID or just partial DID OSDD whatever um but there were some things about the way she thinks that apparently other people don't think like that, which I probably need to ask someone, hey, do you think like this or is that just me? But she was saying like, she mentioned these things to people and they're like, no, I don't think like that. And so now I'm a bit like, okay. Um, and then there was another video she did where it's the kind of thing that I've been thinking where like, maybe it's just psychosis or maybe it's something to do with schizoid. Um, and yeah, so apparently that's quite common as well the self-doubt but I still think there's room for it to be justified self-doubt like how do you know the barrier between um just having self-doubt because you're anxious about it or having self-doubt for valid reasons like yeah maybe it could be psychosis that's the tricky thing but yeah just seeing that video I guess it's made me think a bit more like oh shit <laughs> maybe I do have something like this at least and I probably should go and see a psychologist but yeah I'm still sucking myself up also also one of the things she mentioned is like um when you're going when they when when she's going through a period of not dissociating um then she's like you know saying oh it's not it's not real um and all that kind of stuff and I'm like oh shit I think that too like while I'm having one of these weird experiences that's when I believe it like I'm like oh yeah this is definitely a thing but then I go through a fa like a period of time where it doesn't affect me and I start getting comfortable with the idea like no actually there's nothing weird going on here that's just a an odd interest I have or something and then it'll hit me and I'll be like no no this is definitely a thing that I uh, that's happening to me um yeah and <laughs> there's so much more I could say about that but I was just watching those videos going oh crap maybe that is something that's actually a thing for me Anyway, so that's some thoughts in the studio. Now what am I going to do? I'm not sure. I could make more of, like, these little things. I know, right? Like, heavy metal singer, rah, rah, and then cute little piggy. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sitting here going, like, oh, I don't, I definitely don't have any kind of split personality. Um, but, like, no, like, I'm being, I'm being a bit, is it facetious or I don't know my my brain dictionary is a bit tired as well today but um no there's a lot of people who are into dark things who are also into cute things it's kind of a meme but it's just one of those things that makes me laugh um because sometimes I'll be in you know cyber goth dark grr kind of mode and sometimes I'll be fluffy kitten mode and it's just like yeah I'm just into some odd stuff that's not really a personality thing but um it, it's just something that makes me laugh. I have, and then, like, you know, the fact that I have so many different hobbies, I don't consider that to be part of the dissociation things for me. Like, the, I know what in, what I mean in my head about the dissociation stuff, and it's quite different. Um, but I do try and get some of it out into my art, and these are some old artworks that still feel incredibly relevant. Um, and now I'm surrounded by them. Hmm. And uh, like, you know, oh, obvious things that I've had going on since forever. Like, come on. And <laughs> at the very least, this is some kind of obsession. 
Um, so I guess that's when I thought maybe I had autism. I guess that was another thing. Like, what if I just have a special interest to do with duality and all this kind of stuff? And maybe I'm reading into it too much anyway. Anyway, anyway, I'm rambling as usual. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I've got to stop making promises about things because I keep changing my mind about am I going to live stream? Am I not going to live stream on this particular day? Uh, yeah, anyway, another video. And so, yeah, basically YouTube is helping me in some way, like making the daily videos again. Um, yeah, cool. It's nice to have something feel like that again. So I guess I will just keep making random videos. Oh, and I know I'm like bombarding people with a lot of uh, like you know going from a, a couple videos a month to suddenly every day um i'm probably overwhelming people with content but you know that's okay but the other thought i had in relation to that is um uh in the terms of being repetitive so one of the things that i worry about i know i was just going to wrap up the video and then i decided to keep going um that's just me but uh yeah so in terms of one of the anxieties I have I guess in terms of making videos is the idea of being repetitive because I have a lot of the same thoughts and the same themes keep popping up and I know that I'm saying things I've already said before but on the other hand and especially if I'm making videos every day uh, which people can't keep up with watching all of them because you know you have lives um well some of some of us some of you have lives not all of us have lives um anyway oh uh, what I'm trying to say what am what am I trying to say I'm trying to say like because I'm making so many videos that people are going to miss and, you know, new audiences don't necessarily have time to catch up with my entire life. Um, the, another thing I was thinking of is I need to be less worried about being repetitive. It's okay to be rep repetitive because sometimes I will want to revisit a topic, but also because sometimes, or most of the time, I think audiences aren't necessarily going to know things that I've gone through. So yeah, trying to be like, okay with that. Um, I think I've sort of passed that barrier in my head. It's okay to be a little bit repetitive because there's always some new thought and some new angle. And yeah, it probably does help some people get a better idea of what I'm on about because I don't always lay out everything in the clearest way. And I am pretty chaotic. So that's all my thoughts today, I think. I think. Let's just wait a moment and see if any more thoughts suddenly pop up. But yeah, I've got to decide what am I going to do next? Or do I just go home because this headache? Is so bad and then I only have one thing to show Patreon for today but I don't know I'll see how I go um yeah so catch you in the next video